economists usually assume that the goal of all firms is to maximize profit. So not just in under markets uh, under perfect competitive markets, but then in all markets, firms are we are going to assume that the firms are aiming at profit maximization. So then the question is, how does a perfect competitive firm maximize a sort profit? For us to do that, we first have to determine the profit function of our firm. And the profit function or the profit of the firm is a total revenue minus your total cost. And remember that your total revenue is a function of output. Your total cost is also a function of output. So if I take total cost out of total revenue, I have my profit. So if I want to maximize, I have to take the first other condition of the profit function subject to what? Output. And when I do that, I equate it to zero. So in other, when I take the, to, uh, the first other condition, the first derivative of the total of the profit function with respect to output is going to be uh, my total revenue as a function uh, dTr dQ, which minus dTc dQ. But then, and that must be equal to zero. So if I take dTc dQ to the other side, and I, then I can say that my my uh, my first order condition is the TR the Q equals to the TC the Q. And the TR the Q happens to be marginal revenue and the TC the Q happens to be marginal cost. So in other words, when marginal cost is equal to the marginal revenue, then the firm maximizes its profit. There is a second order condition for to profit maximization. Remember, we said that the marginal revenue must be equal to the marginal cost, but the marginal cost must be rising. Okay. In this case, we take the second order derivative, and we're going to get uh, the second order, the second deri order derivation of the total revenue function with respect to, uh, to that of output minus the to second derivation of the total cost with respect to output, that being less than what zero. If it takes the second order derivation of the total cost with respect to output to the other side of the equation, then we have total second order derivation of the total revenue with respect to output being less than the total uh, the second order derivation of the total cost with respect to that of output. But then the second the second order derivation of uh, the, uh, differentiation of uh, the total revenue with respect to that of output is the slope of the marginal revenue. And that of total cost is the slope of the marginal cost. So in other words, what we are saying is that the slope of the marginal revenue must be less than the slope of the marginal cost for us to maximize our profits. So to maximize profit, there are two conditions. The first condition is that marginal revenue must be equal to marginal cost. That is the first order condition. Then the second order condition states that the slope of the marginal revenue must be less than the slope of the marginal cost. And when that happens, then the firm is maximizing profit. Mm. But the slope of the marginal revenue is equal to zero because we have a horizontal demand curve. In other words, the, marginal, the slope of the marginal cost curve must be positive for us to have, uh, for us to maximize profit when marginal revenue is equal to the marginal cost. And we can illustrate that here. In this figure 2b, marginal cost is equal to marginal revenue at, at output of 8, and the firm maximizes profit. And we see that the marginal cost is sort of rising. So, for the firm to make profit, we look, we have a total revenue, which is a blue, which is, the, which is depicted by the blue line, and our black line shows the total cost. At lower stages of production, before output of three, the firm makes losses because total cost is greater than total revenue. But subsequently, from output 3 onwards up to an output of, say, 10, the firm makes profit. 
But the question is, how do we maximize profit? We're going to look at the distance between the uh, two curves. That gives you where shaded pink, that gives you the highest distance. And that highest distance is when uh, the firm produces an output of what? Eight. And makes a profit of 81 Ghana cities. How did we arrive at this? What we did was draw a line that is tangential to the total cost curve. And that line of tangency must be equal to that of the total revenue. In other words, remember, we must equate marginal revenue to marginal cost. And the slope of the, marginal, of the total revenue is the marginal revenue. And the slope of the total cost is the marginal cost. So when these two points, these lines are parallel, it means the slopes are the same. So the line of tangency to the uh, TC tells us that the slope, since that line of tangency is parallel to the total revenue, it tells us the slope at, along the TSC at that particular point of tangency is the same as the total revenue, and that as marginal revenue, and that gives us our profit maximizing output level. So that is how we can determine the profit maximization, profit maximization using graph. Now we can talk about types, different types of profit that a firm can enjoy in the short run. In the short run, the firm can make losses. The firm can make losses, can make normal profit or supernormal profit. But then for us to be able to determine profit, we need to know the cost per unit of producing the commodity. In other words, we need to know our average cost curve at each level of output. So in this case, for example, we have our cost per output curve being the ATC, which is shown here, and our average variable cost is here, and our marginal cost is here. That is our marginal revenue curve and our demand curve, which is equal to the price. So we expect that at the point where the marginal revenue is equal to the marginal cost, which is given at this particular point, our output is determined here and the firm maximizes profit. But then the question is, how do we determine the cost? For us to determine the cost, we have to look at it at this output level. What is the cost per unit? And the cost per unit is where at this point, and that will be the cost per unit. So the blue area shows us the profit that the firm incurs. But then the area under this, this entire area here, which is shaded, uh, that is the uh, orange class, the blue shaded area happens to be that of the total uh, revenue generated. And if you take the total revenue, uh, you take cost out of the total revenue, we are left with the blue shaded area, and that is your profit. Mm. And it is the cost per unit minus the uh, price minus the cost per unit of output. But then, and when that happens, what the firm has made, what the firm is doing is the firm is making excessive profit because the cost per output is far lower than the price that the firm is charging. So the firm makes super normal profit. The firm can also make normal profit or can break even. This is where the price is equal to the cost per output of producing the commodity. And again, we can, that can be seen here that the marginal cost is equal to the marginal revenue and we determine price at this point. And output is maximized here. And the firm maximizes profit at this particular point because the marginal cost is again rising when it's equal to the marginal revenue. For us to determine profit, we look for the ATC, but the ATC is also at this point. And so in that case, the price is equal to the cost per output. And that means that the firm makes uh, or breaks even or super no, makes, super no, uh, makes normal profit. The firm can may also make losses. And in this case, you will see that at the point where the firm maximizes profit, the cost per output lies above the price. Hence, the firm is making losses. And these are economic losses. Now, how we've, look, we've seen the demand curve for the firm, but how about the supply curve of the firm? 
it is a bit technical in trying to derive the supply curve. First, what we need to do is to determine what you call the shutdown point. Remember the average cost, the average variable cost curve, or the average variable cost is a cost per unit of the variable input. In other words, for me to be in business, I should be able to pay the variable input in the short run. Because remember, the fixed cost is incurred even before production. So to be in business, must pay, be able to pay the variable input, which in this case is labor. That means that if, if the market price is below the minimum average, average variable cost, that means that I cannot produce and I cannot, because I cannot pay labor and I must stay out of business. But if the price, let's say, is equal to two, then as a firm, I must stay in business when the minimum part of the AVC as shown here is also equal to two. The firm will then be in business. But if the price should fall below two, then the firm will have to shut down. So this point that we see here uh, labeled point E naught is what we call the shutdown point. If the price should fall below this point, then the firm is going to shut down. So the firm will begin producing at this point, E. So long as the price remains at two, then the firm will produce. If the price should increase, the firm is going to increase its output and produce a higher amount of the commodity, say Q1. As the price increases further, the firm increases its output onto the market to Q3. So the firm is determined, and remember, for us to determine our uh, equilibrium output also, our uh, equilibrium uh, profit maximization point, the firm is equating the marginal revenue to the marginal cost. The yellow line here shows the marginal cost. And the line P0, P1, P2, P3 depicts our demand curves. And that is also the marginal revenue. So at point E0, our marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost at this point when the demand curve happens to be P0. When the demand increases to P1, our equilibrium is at E1. When it increases to E2, equilibrium is at E2. And when it increases to P3, equilibrium is at E3. So in other words, the firm is determining its output along the marginal cost curve, where it equals to the marginal revenue. If you translate that information here to this diagram, we're going to have output of 2 producing Q0, when, sorry, price of P2 producing Q0. When the price increases to 3, the firm will produce Q1. 4, the firm will produce Q2. 5, the firm will produce Q3. So what the firm is doing is, it is determining its output along the marginal cost curve. Hence, the rising portion of the marginal cost curve that lies above the minimum AVC is a supply curve of the firm. We are not interested in the part of the marginal cost curve that lies below the a minimum AVC because we said when you find yourself at the minimum AVC, a price below the minimum AVC, the firm will not produce any unit of the commodity. You have to shut down. So the area, of the, the part of the marginal cost curve that lies above the AVC is our marginal, it's our supply curve for the firm. And the market supply, again, for us to determine the market supply, it is the horizontal summation of the, mark, of the individual supply curves. And this supply curve, market supply curve, is influenced by certain factors. Factors such as the price of inputs and the technology that is available. So if the technology changes, that means that our supply curve is going to change. And if the input prices do change, our supply curve is also going to change. And it is not just about these two, but then it also depends on the size and distribution of firms in the market. That's the, to that's the total market output at each price is a sum of the output supplied by individual firms at the prevail prevailing price. And these, we've said, are determined by technology, factor prices, size, 
size distribution of firms in the market. And these factors will determine the market supply. So we know the market demand to be the horizontal summation. We know the uh, horizontal summation of all individual demands. And we know that the supply, market supply, is also the horizontal summation of all individual supply curve. And we are seeing that the market demand is downward sloping. The market supply is upward sloping. When we interact, the market price is determined. And the firms are going to take the price as given. Again, there are some questions for this session. And try your hands at these questions. Thank you and see you in the next session.